beautiful Saturday morning. It's a long weekend, and it's time for the Cummins Real Estate Group show with, of course, Michelle Cummins and myself, Curtis Pope. Good morning, Michelle. Good long weekend Saturday morning to you, Curtis. How are you? I'm good. Now, I, now I have to ask, being that's a long week, and I know you had a busy week. Are, are are we indulging in a Christmas coffee this morning? No, not yet. <laughs> Just uh, have maybe to too ask. early for that. Just had to check, make sure. But it is the 25th this week, so I am preparing for the fifth month uh, of the year. Fifth month you know, the fifth month of Christmas. Yes, because you've been doing that Christmas year-round on the 25th, and I know that it's been working out really well for you. It's been a lot of fun. Have you got Richard a new car yet? No. (laughs) Um, Keeping that one under wraps maybe for another 20 years. No. (laughs) Maybe maybe a new guitar? Uh, Of course he needs a new guitar. Well, he could always use a new banjo because he sold that one and a 12 string because he sold that one like years ago. And I love those two instruments. The thing is, oh, whenever, a violin. A, whenever a guitar player sells a guitar, it's a little suspect because usually that means they want to buy another one. You know, you know musicians really well. <laughs> that is so true. They never because really sell them. Best. They just kind of trade off. It's so true. It's like he'll do one project and he'll use it in in the recording and then he'll need, you know, a different sound for... I remember I, my favorite thing I ever bought him, though, that I love to hear is the Evo. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't know why. I love well, that sound. I know that my son has four guitars. He's really only started playing about two years ago. He's got four guitars now and he wants to go out later today and buy another one. He, oh my gosh, he already has four. He, well, he has an acoustic. He has a Les Paul. He has a um, a jazz master, and then he also has his uh, his Strat. And now he wants a Tele. He's going to be like Vince Gill or you know Nicole Kidman's husband, and have a whole warehouse, a whole house and warehouse full of just their guitars. Yes. Well, how many does how many does Sir Richard have? Oh, I lost count. <laughs> But it, it, they all fit in one and a half rooms. What? One and a half rooms. <laughs> he, he hasn't completely filled up the second room yet. No. I need to see a picture of Dylan's four guitars. And if he gets one today. Are, are you going to do a social post? Because you, I, you have not done. I've checked. You have not done. And I think it's Instagram for sure. You haven't done a post in a while. No, I have not. And actually, I, somebody said to me the other day, you have not done any pictures of your new house yet. And I'm like, well, no, I haven't. Because I want to make sure we were completely set up and it all looked good for the pictures. And, well, we haven't quite fully got there. And the rooms that we have, the kids have already started to mess up. So I have to clean the house and finish putting up pictures and some other things. Then I can put the pictures up. Okay, yes, you got to get to that because you, everyone just is in anticipation of seeing what it looks like. Well, I will, I will get on that. That's okay, my so goal this weekend. I, I got a couple days here now after today. I'll, I'll get her done. Write it down. Write it down. <laughs> Michelle says I have to get pictures of the new house up. Okay, I will do so. You know what? You got to put in your calendar. I live by my Google calendar, and if I didn't, if it wasn't for time blocking, I couldn't get done all that I get done. Well, time block. Providing I don't get, you know, a beer in my hand when I get home, I'll be a little early anyway. Providing I stay away from the beer fridge, it should be fine. I can get stuff done this weekend. Well, I think that's kind of important, you know, to at least have one beer. (laughs) Well, we should probably talk real estate, even though we're talking about my house and your husband's guitar collection taking up your house. Uh, We should probably talk about real estate. So uh, what, what are we talking about today? Somehow, magically, every conversation ends or talks about real estate. Isn't that interesting? Well, that's kind of, that the, kind of the point of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, my pop, my dad, Wayne Hartunian, he was rushed into the emergency room this last week. And, I mean, whenever your loved one has something like that, it just shakes you up, and uh, I was in prayers and prayers, and uh, he is being released. (laughs) I'm just so, so happy. He's being released to go back home. But it kind of lended me to thinking of sharing something this week, Uh, and for next week, actually, we're going to have a guest finally. We haven't had a guest in a while, uh, and only one in over a year. So 
We're going to talk about our first segment, seven home selling tips for seniors. And I just, yeah, and next week, our guest, it's good, we're going to have an occupational therapist in because my dad gets to go home. He doesn't have to go into a care home. He doesn't want to. Most, you know, um, people love being home. And thank goodness my one of my sisters lives with him. It's his caretaker. But they're going to be sending an occupational therapist a couple times a week uh, to the home. And so this information that we're going to share uh, today, but mostly next week with our guests, uh, they it is going to hopefully help a lot of people. So a representative from Greystone Bath and Home Services is going to be in, on our call next week uh, with the occupational therapist to talk about the new BC housing program. It's called Rebate for Accessible Home Adaptations, RARA for uh, acronym. acronym. RARA? Program, yeah, yeah, RARA, yeah. Is this a Lady <laughs> Gaga song? What's going on here? <laughs> it could be. It may become one. Uh, and the program, it'll benefit so many people and uh, people who are disabled or have diminished disability to keep them in their own homes longer. It's really all about word of mouth. And that's why we wanted to bring them in to share the love, share the information. Uh, so you can get a rebate. It's up to $17,500. So that the, the, we'll have them in next week to explain all of that. So, but, but the seven tips for selling, uh, selling tips for seniors, if you were to sell, here we go. I mean, it requi- the required steps for selling your home can sometimes seem overwhelming in like no matter how many often you do it. Uh, but here, here's the seven tips to make it easier. Uh, First, get sound financial advice. So to estimate how much you'll net, it's so important. So consider transactional fees and future financial needs and get tax and financial advice. So very important. Uh, Second tip, create a timeline. The best timeline shows major transition milestones with realistic flexibility built into the dates and reviewing it should alert you to any potential pitfalls. So uh, I talked about my Google. Google Calendar. I love uh, time blocking. I love putting everything in and making sure you get alerts and you kind of look at it and you got some time and so you don't ever feel rushed and you know you'll never miss a step. I have a program called, uh, you know, Move Snap. Uh, it's, it's a system to hopefully help my buyers. And Curtis, you were on it when you moved. Absolutely. And it, it's a helpful reminder that sends you, you know, did you think about this? They, you know, this is coming up. So, so keeping that, if you don't have a program like that, building your own timeline is, is so very important uh, to help you so you don't feel stressed or that you're missing out. Third tip, hire the right real estate professional. I mean, can't say more than that. <laughs> Call me if you would love help. I would love to help you. Uh, but the right professional will provide a realistic listing price and answer all your questions before asking you to sign the listing agreement. And I always say, no matter how times you ask the same question, ask it again and again and again until it sticks because there's so much coming at you when you're thinking of selling and you're thinking of moving. There's just so much. And if you haven't done it in a really long time, there is a, a lot to know. A lot of things change. So ask a lot of questions and make sure you feel confident uh, before you move forward. And the fourth tip sort and declutter. So again, uh, very obvious, but it really does help. And sometimes you just need a reminder of these things. So the fourth tip, using a timeline, again, makes the process of selling, maybe donating some things, discarding. It's really hard to downsize. So going through all that, it's going to take time. And, uh, you know, storing storing everything, too. I mean, it could be less daunting if, if you just take, have a timeline and give yourself enough time and hopefully some help. Help. Tip number five, repair and refresh. So small repairs could be one aspect that features buyers. I mean, uh, they sometimes they just want the move-in ready home. And if they see doorknobs broken or, you know, cabinet doors hanging on the hinge, you know, 
sometimes these things may seem daunting to you because you've lived in the home and and they pile up. But if you just have a one service provider, handyman, somebody come in and just do everything, it's, it's way less daunting and it will make a difference. Uh, so do the things that will help make the home marketable to the target buyer for the area. And I always say target buyer because you just don't splash your listings on the MLS uh, and a little social media and think it's going to sell for the highest price possible. No, your professional realtor needs to target the right buyer. Who is the right buyer for your home? Now target them in the areas that they live. Get into their home. Get into get your property to them. And so you do want to make it marketable to those buyers. So you do get top dollar and sell in a in a reasonable amount of time. Tip six. Let the pros pack and move. I mean, you've done enough of this in your life. Uh, hire somebody. The process will be faster than doing it yourself and will probably result in less damage as well and less possible injury. Tip number seven, be patient. The process of listing and showing your property and closing your residence, I mean, it can be difficult and time-consuming, so be patient with yourself and those helping you. So those are my seven uh, tips for helping seniors prepare to move. All right. Now, if people want to uh, get a hold of you and maybe they have more questions about some of these steps and what they need to do, how can they get a hold of you? michellecummins.ca All right, we are back with more right after this. star michelle cummins and myself curtis pope now this time around we're talking that that something that that always scares people and it's credit score yes oh that 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 word credit score um yeah and sometimes what you don't know it, it haunts you so you gotta know it you want to know it you should know it Today, we are bringing to our listeners five reasons you need to know your credit score. Okay, so there's, I know, I know a few of them, but I want to see what you got here. <laughs> Perfect. You might add to the five, hey? Uh, well, I wouldn't go that far, but sure, let's go with that. <laughs> Oh, so credit scores, I mean, they're, they're used to judge pretty much everything. Uh, if you want to rent something, of course, they're going to do a credit score. Uh, I mean, even getting a job. So reasonable, I mean, a reasonable person, it, 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 likelihood of repaying a loan, I mean, everything has to do around that credit score. And the interesting thing is those who keep the credit scores, they're all third party you know, it, it, but you, we all have a credit scar and it's out there. So you got to know it. And we have the right to know it without having to pay uh, it being your credit score. You were allowed to check your credit and it is a very good thing to do. They actually have uh, something where you can get a monthly uh, enrollment and they'll keep you alerted if anybody uses or checks your credit score or anything so it's a good idea maybe if you're trying to build your credit score to do that for a few months watch your credit score watch it build up and stay accountable to build it up if you need to uh, because really we need it for so many things in life so if the score falls below 760 it's time to start improving it so these are five reasons to monitor the credit score Number one, saving money on insurance. Now, the credit score can impact how much you pay for your home and auto insurance. You, some people may not even know that, but they, it, it's true. Uh, your credit score will help you get uh, better uh, rates in more ways than one. Uh, number two, helps to get a job. So employers will probably look at the full credit report, which is used to calculate the score. So sometimes, you know, you, we can do credit uh, criminal checks well credit scores are important as well and yes sometimes employers especially big corporations they will look up your full credit report uh, number three 
qualifying for better credit cards. I mean, you know, we don't want bad debt, but guess what? Having a credit card, using it and paying it off every month actually builds your credit score. It's actually a good thing and you want to do that. A lot of people think I'm just going to pay cash for everything. I'm not going to have any loans whatsoever. But then if they do need a loan one day, when they do go for that mortgage, when they do need that line of credit, guess what? They're going to check your credit score and you don't have a credit Credit score if you haven't ever used credit. So make sure you use it. Use it properly, though. Pay it off every month. And, I mean, there's so many places where you actually need a, cre- a credit card to actually even pay for something. So, uh, But just pay it off every month. Number four, help to find a home. Of course, but credit scores greatly impact the ability to secure any kind of loan, including the biggest loan we usually ever get as human beings, which is our mortgages, which is also usually the biggest equity builder and the biggest investment we ever make. So credit scores, again, so important. Number five, protection from identity theft. That's why you want to keep an eye on your credit score as well. Not only the accountability to build it, but also to protect it from identity theft. So have you ever lost a wallet? Curtis, have you ever lost your wallet? Yes, many, many years ago before I uh, had anything. I was like 17, 18, and I lost. So I didn't have any credit cards or anything, but I still lost my license and my bank card, and I think I had like 10 bucks in it. And when you're 17, that's pretty much the most money you ever have in your wallet. So I was I was pretty upset about it, but somebody found it and did the right thing and, and tracked it down and dropped it off in my house for me. But still, it was, uh, it was about 24 hours of going, I lost my license. I lost my bank card. What am I going to do? It is, oh my gosh, it's overwhelming thinking of everything you have to do if you lost your wallet. Uh, Richard lost his wallet a couple times, I have to say. Uh, Once it was retrieved, like yours, thank goodness. But the other time, no. It was taken and it was used. And yes, he had some identity identity theft happening. So that was not not fun. Who steals a musician's identity? That isn't going to help you. Right? <laughs> That's going to work against you. <laughs> you might get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <sighs> Somebody but could no. be getting in trouble for something that Richard did 30 years ago now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, we, that that's one thing we did was was we were checking his credit score to see and watch it, and we actually put uh, he was on alert. So anytime that, and you can actually uh, be on alert where anytime somebody tries to use your credit card or anything, they call you first. Uh, so sometimes that can help. But yeah, uh, so I didn't do that. I mean. Even if a score, and you'll never believe, you know, the average score, uh, will, 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 it's actually the FICO scores range from 350 to 850, uh, and under 850 is considered poor credit, and 740 or higher is considered a very good. I'll, I'll break it down in a little bit, but I, you'll never believe, I have a, like, it is rare when you find somebody with 900 and above. I mean, I mean, this is so rare. I have a client who has, I think it was 930 or 900, and they were just telling me last week they have such good credit. Uh, But an exceptional credit, they say, is 800 to 850. That's an exceptional credit. Very good credit is 740 to 799. Good credit is 670 to 739. Fair credit is 580 to 669, and then poor credit is under 580. So that gives uh, uh, some clue into the credit score. So, yeah, keep an eye on it. I mean, if you want to pay that, I don't know what it is, $20 a month or something like that, and you can actually uh, be alerted and keep an eye on it and look at it as many times as you want, and it doesn't ding your your credit. Oh, and the other thing is so many uh, places, you know, you go to a furniture store and, and you put it on a loan or whatnot. A lot of times they don't remove it from your credit. And it should be removed uh, once you paid it off or they don't uh, report things correctly or they don't update correctly. So it is really important to have a look at your credit and check it and take the time to apply to make things right if it's wrong. Uh, It's funny you should say that because when we just bought our house and we did our credit check, my credit was okay. It was good. It was fine. But there was a credit card showing up there that I paid off like two years ago. And canceled. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, and and sometimes they just forget, don't take the time, don't want to pay the the money to take the time to do it. But yeah, it it helps though. Cause clean it up, right? Mm-hmm. Clean it up. Uh, so I've been having a lot of fun with my Facebook Live walkthroughs of my new listings, and I just I did three this week, which is fantastic. Next week I'm going to do two. I'm going to do one on Tuesday at noon. And that one's going to be uh, this new listing. Actually, I'm going to mention right now uh, this awesome new investment listing. The OCP is multifamily. It is near the hospital in Mission. It is a fabulous uh, split level. Pretty much, you can almost call it a rancher. There's a few steps up to it. And uh, the basement has an unauthorized suite in it. Nobody's in the suite. And it has got a carport, a large parking. Oh, flat, fully usable land. And guess this land size for this lot, 11,550 square feet, which is so rare. And it, it's in a great area. It's 2,300 square feet, the house is. So we are going to have a price point on that by uh, Monday, and it's going to go live probably Monday. But I'm going to Tuesday at noon on my Facebook business page. I will do a live walkthrough if anybody wants to have a look at that. Again, great holding property, great investment. Oh, great. With family, move into the suite or whatnot. Uh, and then on Thursday, I'm going to do a live walkthrough of this awesome, totally, totally modern, like so neat. I, Gold Edge Properties is the builder of this home. They built it in 2015, and I actually walked through it before they had it lit live, before they sold it when it was new, and I walked through a few of their other homes, and uh, the owner of this amazing place, uh, or, or Gold Edge Properties, he was born and raised in Mission, and he's got passion and all these ideas, and his partner, is the builder, they're amazing. They do a really good job, but anyway, this one's coming up live next week as well uh it is uh, a large large home it's over 4,000 square feet easily suitable it's already roughed in for a suite it's up on night avenue which is a really nice area of mission and again modern really oh, large ki- the kitchen and the island and that it's got a double island it's so fantastic curtis um but yeah my live walkthrough of that is going to be thursday at noon and the price on that is one million two hundred and fifty thousand. and quick possession could be possible on that one and those are the two live walkthroughs i'm going to do next week but i do have have a third listing hitting the market next week and this is actually a cool penthouse this is luxury this is top floor obviously corner wraparound deck it's in north burnaby off gilmore avenue and i'm excited to bring the the everyone this listing because it's uh, i'm getting the drone video uh the the dusk photos were done last night i'm getting all the daylight photos uh done as well and it's going to go live i'll have a price on that by monday as well keep an eye on that and those are my three new listings coming up next week and uh, my motto i don't i think curtis i think you know i've got a, a couple and one thing i like to say is me and my group, we love unlocking your real estate potential. I mean, everyone has this real estate potential. It starts with your first primary residence and you build it from there. And we love, I love unlocking your real estate potential and, and making you, you, you financially wealthy through real estate. Love it. So this uh, quote kind of has to do with that. It is from Anthony J. D'Angelo. And the quote of the week is smile. It is the key that fits the lock of everybody's heart. Aha, I like that one. That's a good one. So another unlock. Mm-hmm. Smile. Nice. All right. People's heart. I like that. Well, if people want to unlock their real estate potential and they want more information from you, where can they go? MichelleCummins.ca. And make plans to join us again next week when once again we will talk real estate in order to unlock your real estate potential on a show where real estate is maximized. Thanks for listening.